live from KSAT 12. Good morning San Antonio starts right now. A man found guilty of murder will soon learn his fate. What's expected today in the punishment phase for the man who shot and killed a man over a dog petting incident. Plus, the search for a missing mother continues. It's so hard because I never thought that this would be our life. How her mom is trying to be strong for her son who just had to celebrate her birthday without her. And an important reminder this morning about wearing proper attire when you hit the polls and how to avoid a $500 fine. All right, good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday, October 29th, yes. of course, counting down to Halloween. Talking mm -hmm. a little bit about it. Getting we were. Our, uh, Halloween ready, right? Yeah. Just getting I mean, our gear ready to go. We're, so <laughs> we're going to do so. Like, I'm not even going to put it out there. So I want you guys to be expecting keep us wearing yes. costumes or anything. But hey, you know, we got we to gotta show up and represent. Yeah. But we got to make sure that it, it is properly worn mm -hmm. in the weather. Yes. And I know yeah. we're still looking at warm temperatures, possibly, mm -hmm. Justin, but it might be a little wet. Maybe a little bit of rain, too. Yeah. There's a chance. Okay. There's a chance. I, I think this is going to time out well, though. We're going to get some showers and maybe a storm in the morning, and then uh, hopefully things will clear out a little bit as we head into the evening hours. Could all work out well. Let me show you the radar, though, this morning because we do have some showers starting to show up. These are quick splash and dash type uh, showers. They're not going to last very long, uh, but I was going to zoom in down here around uh, Palo Alto College uh, there along 410 on the east south side, and we are getting some showers. They could be briefly moderate to heavy, but uh, again, these are going to last about a minute or two and then move right along. Uh, I'll be interested to see what Alex finds out there if he gets any wet roads. I think it's a possibility this morning. Uh, even if you don't see these showers, you can see a little bit of drizzle. There's that much humidity out there. The air is very, very thick. And so our forecast today does call for a 20% chance of rain. Basically, I'd say morning through about 3 o'clock. And if you do see some of these showers, again, you're not going to get much rain out of it, but at least it's something. And we'll be up around 86 today, uh, mostly cloudy skies with some more sun late evening, late afternoon. Uh, let's talk about trick-or-treating. You guys brought up Halloween. Sunset's going to be around 648 on Thursday. Uh, just to give you some info there, temperatures probably near 80 or so. It's still going to be warm. Our front that we're going to talk about doesn't really move through, so it stays warm. Uh, but there is that chance of rain, again, mainly early in the day. We're going to talk much more about the Halloween forecast for you uh, coming up in just a few minutes. But uh, let's talk traffic now. We'll see if any of those wet roads have any impacts, guys. Yeah, at this time, we do not have any crash-related incidents taking place right now, but we do have a stalled vehicle. I think that's the only thing that we're seeing right now, uh, some type of stalled vehicle on 35 North. Uh, uh, and then Richards, of course, uh, if you guys are in that area, they only got a shoulder blocked at this time, so you don't have to worry about that. This right here, I-35 and Olympia, I guess we got like a car or something in that little median mm -hmm. area, but yeah. Yeah, no, no, no type of disrupt, uh, disturbances, right? Yeah, now. and this is an area that obviously has a lot of construction going on here, continuing that uh, northeast expansion project on the northeast side of town. Let's go ahead and check in with Alex Gomez. He is back with us after a uh, well-deserved day off for Alex out there. So, Alex, how are things looking on the roads? And uh, all right, we see some uh, brake lights ahead of you, my man. How's it going? <laughs> RJ, good morning. It's going well. As soon as I left the station, I already caught some of those sprinkles starting to come down downtown. So be aware of that. I'm actually going to make the U-turn right here at Culebra to head south into the city where Justin was talking about. Maybe I can catch some more, some more of those showers right there. So just stay ready for any moisture because it, we've been dry for so long. Any of that moisture is going to mix in with the greases and the oils and it could make things slick. So I'll let you know if I find any of those showers, RJ. Yeah, and you can see from Alex's drive cam right there, it looks a little cloudy for sure out there. So something we will continue to mind as he comes upon some emergency lights there. I think that is that uh, construction work to, uh, there at I-10 near the uh, Hildebrand area. So thank you very much, Alex. We'll check in back in with him the rest of this hour. The mom of a four year old little boy has now been missing for more than three months. That's right. This is one of our top stories here. Now that little boy is staying with his grandmother. Our Devin Carp is joining us in the studio this morning. And Devin, that grandmother believes that someone may have killed her daughter. RJ and Jaffney, that's right. Valerie Mendoza says her daughter, Kate Vara, struggled with substance abuse. However, she was getting help at a Westside medical clinic. On August 6th, Kate went to her appointment. Mendoza says no one has seen her since she left. She went on to say Kate has never been gone away for this long, and she would never not check in on her son, James, and that they even had to celebrate Kate's 27th birthday without her last month. 
he was like, where's mom? Because, you know, we're, we're having a birthday party for mom and we're doing something for mom and mom's not here. He told me himself, he said, mom's missing. And I said, yes, baby, I said, mom is missing. And he was like, where's mom? And I said, I don't know where mom's at. I said, but we're going to find her. She believes one of Kate's friends may know what happened or could have been involved since he somehow ended up with Kate's phone. SAPD has not named that person a suspect. And at last check, they also said there are no updates. But Mendoza says SAPD's homicide unit is now assisting their missing persons unit in Kate's case. Mendoza is now offering a $3,000 reward for anyone with information. We've got that information up right now on KSAT.com. RJ and Jaffney. Devin, the punishment phase of a trial for a man found guilty of murder will begin later this morning. Jordan Eden was found guilty yesterday of killing Valentin Gonzalez after Gonzalez's wife bent down to pet his dog back in 2021. Eaton stated that that day of the shooting, he told the neighbors not to pet his dog. Prosecutors played a video that showed Valentin reportedly fight Eaton for the gun. Eaton testified that on Friday that he told and told the jury that he was fighting for his life when he was arguing with the victim. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jordan Eaton, guilty of the office of murder as charged in count one of the indictment and said instructed in count. You heard it right there. Eaton could face up to life in prison. I feel like no one should feel pressured to any which way whenever they're coming to pass their decision. I think it's critical for our democracy. All right, in some political news this morning, while you may remember this man right here, we've done a few stories now. His name is Jetsy Lessenberger, and he's charged with assaulting a poll worker. He became upset last week after a poll worker asked him to remove the MAGA hat that he was wearing. So this story continues to develop here. Election rules states that voters cannot wear clothing supporting a political candidate within 100 feet of the polls here in the state of Texas. So how many voters actually know what you can and can't wear while voting. I, I just recently I became aware uh, that we cannot wear any uh, political gear or anything like that. I think I've known basically as long as I've been able to vote. While political hats, shirts, buttons, or even masks are not allowed within 100 feet of a polling site. And if you forget, just turn your shirt inside out, and then you can also just leave the other stuff in your car. If you refuse or resist, you could be slapped with a $500 misdemeanor fine. And by the way, if you're still needing to vote but don't know where to go, we break that down for you on KSAT.com with a list of the busiest and slowest polling locations across town. So right now we've got everything else you need to know between now and Election Day before you head out to the polls and cast your vote. Meanwhile, Vice President Kamala Harris will deliver a final stretch closing argument addressed tonight at the site of former President Donald Trump's rally on January the 6th, 2021. This was before the attack on the U.S. Capitol. She's expected to further her message on her belief that Trump is a threat to democracy. Meanwhile, former President Donald Trump in Pennsylvania today, where he's joining an event in Drexel Hill and holding a rally in Allentown. He's expected to continue pushing his policies while criticizing Harris's weaknesses with the current administration's policies on issues like immigration, foreign policy, and the economy. The state's 19 electoral votes are seen as pivotal to the candidate's path to victory. Vice presidential nominees are also in key swing states today. Harris's running mate Tim Walls is in Georgia, while his counterpart, J.D. Vance, in Michigan. All right, some other news this morning out there in Houston. Five people, including three school employees, are under arrest for, get this, engaging in organized crime. Houston police say that this scheme involved falsifying credentials for unqualified teachers to work in school districts there. Prosecutors say in a, a high school assistant principal, Nicholas Newton, took more than 400 certification tests and fraudulently, fraudulently impersonated at least 200 teachers. Yates High School assistant principal, LaShonda Roberts, is accused of recruiting nearly 100 teachers to participate in this scheme and investigators say that it was all orchestrated by Washington High School head basketball coach Vincent Grayson who they say made more than a million dollars from this scheme.
Mm. Sean Diddy Combs facing some new lawsuits. Two men filed several civil suits against him, claiming that they were minors when Combs assaulted them during auditions. Combs has identified or di denied any wrongdoing. He is currently jailed in New York as he awaits his criminal trial. Prosecutors accuse Combs of being involved in sex trafficking, kidnapping, forced labor, and decades of physical abuse against women. He has pleaded not guilty to the charges. All right, busy Tuesday morning so far, Indeed. 510 right now. And you know what? A little bit warmer than I'd like, 74 degrees. Oh, it is outside. 74. Yes. We were just looking at 69 <laughs> and stuff earlier this week. Okay, so now coming up next, your San Antonio Spurs just couldn't get things done last night against the Rockets. We'll hear what the team is saying about the loss. Ooh. All right, well, she's a local <laughs> music teacher. This is a good story right here. And cancer survivor who says her students are her greatest cheerleaders. Coming up next, her message right after the break. Live cam time. Good morning, San Antonio. Thanks for waking up with us. Again, you got traffic moving a little slow right now. A lot of people are barely waking up, but it's okay if you're waking up with us. We have so much ahead, including sports talk, your forecast, your commute with Alex Gomez. Stay with us. Welcome back. It is 514. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And to honor the occasion, we're sharing the story of one local woman who is teaching by example. She hopes her survival story will help others for years to come. All right, you see her right there. That is Vicki Watson. She's an associate band director out there at Lee High School. She was diagnosed with breast cancer back in 2020. She had surgery to remove the tumor and went through chemotherapy, but she did not stop teaching. Vicki says that her students kept her going and they are still keeping her going. Every two weeks, I went for chemotherapy. So I went in on Friday, and then uh, Monday I was back at work, and my kids were my biggest cheerleaders. They were there for me. Just seeing her, how she teaches us after everything that's happened to, like, to her, it's like inspiring, and it shows us that we can like, get through anything if we like, try hard enough and put our effort. Now that Vicki is officially cancer free, she is hoping that her students will remember her story when it comes to getting checked and being proactive about their health. If you were to leave this in place as it, as it exists naturally, it would, it would start to hold that water back and we'd be above that, that 100 year floodplain mark. Some of these homes that are maybe outside the floodplain, we could put those in, in the floodplain. All right, well, it's an ess essentially a haircut for these San Antonio River banks. Check this out. The San Antonio River Authority is removing trees along three chunks of the river as part of its annual stem density removal process. Our Garen Berger tagged along to learn more about how this all works out. And you can watch the story right now on all of our streaming platforms. It is now 515. We're looking at 74 degrees outside. Yeah, definitely feeling a little bit warmer than usual <laughs> out there. Apple Intelligence has arrived for Apple devices with the latest software updates. We're going to go ahead and let you know what's included in that. Let's get to drive cam real quick. Alex Gomez handling business on the road. So far, we're looking at a clear commute, but hopefully that stays the case. We'll keep you updated throughout this morning. 518 right now on your Tuesday morning. Well, the official debut of Apple Intelligence. Check this out. The feature is now available with iOS 18.1 along with two other operating systems. Users will find AI writing tools and photo memories as well as the beginning of a Siri overhaul. Netflix just launched a new feature called Moments. It's a new way to easily save, share, and rewatch specific scenes from shows and movies. There's a Moments button to bookmark the video, similar to the clips function on YouTube and Twitch. It's a mobile-only feature currently available on the iPhone. Ooh. All right. Yes. Well, What's up, man? They don't give any <laughs> love to us at first. No, these Android. Yeah, <laughs> man. Come on. <laughs> well, I was gonna say I haven't updated my iOS in like the last like five. <laughs> So you're, you're, you're behind probably like 20 <laughs> yeah, I different no updates. AI, yeah, I might as well have the <laughs> iPhone like 5 or something. <laughs> All right, checking out Trans Guide right now. Take a look at 35 at Olympia again. Just dealing with some overnight construction here. There we go. 35 at Cesar Chavez. You see the traffic is moving along pretty good both directions there. Again, no major incidents to let you know about right now on your Tuesday morning, Jeff. Yeah, let's get out to Alex Gomez, the man on the roadways. Thanks so much for being back with us. We missed you, Alex. How you doing? 
Jaffney, good morning, missed y'all too. And guess what? I did catch a shower over here on the south side. Justin was spot on. As soon as I got into the area of about 35 and South Cross, even near Zarzamora, there's a pretty good rain coming down. So just a heads up, right now I'm still driving a little bit more further south. This is, this is gonna be 410 near Palo Alto Road. A lot more quieter over here, but again, heads up because we do have some changing driving conditions this morning, Jaffney. All right, Alex, definitely some great tips right there. Hopefully people are keeping that privy. Of course, Joe, oh, I see the sprinkles going oh, yeah, on there right there. Yeah. Perfect Justin timing. Justin gets the gold star of the day. Oh, yes. thank you. <laughs> I just read the radar, but yes, uh, you're welcome. And, and yeah, make sure those windshield wipers are good to go. And Alex made a great point earlier. Just a little bit of rain with the oils on the roads mm -hmm. makes it slick. Be careful. It's a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. We want a quiet Tuesday. All right. But before we jump into the radar real quick, I uh, have it. Ask Justin. We do have our, our trivia question this morning. So, <laughs> per the 2022 USDA Agricultural Census, who knew they took that, but they do, uh, roughly what percentage of Texas is farmland? Is it 14%, 45%, 74%, or 82%? You can vote, ksad.com slash poll, or scan the QR code. This one's kind of a tough one, but if you think about it, reason it, which I know RJ will too, um, <laughs> you, you, you can come up with the answer here. And the reason I point this out is because our farmers are really struggling now. We need some rain in the worst way. And I'm so thankful that we have rain on the radar this morning. This is a good thing. Again, it's not heavy, as Alex showed you. It's uh, mainly just some brief, light to moderate rain, but it is there. And that's, uh, that's exactly what we like to see. So let's put this into motion for you. And you can see some of these showers that are working up into San Antonio, uh, mainly there on the south side right now is where we're seeing some of the patchy light rain. But what you'll also notice is how quickly these are moving. This is what we call the splash and dash variety where you get some quick rain and then that moves right along. You gotta kind of quit, uh, get lucky uh, if you're gonna get some rain at your house. But some of us are, and uh, these will continue to work their way up to San Antonio this morning. Could affect the morning commute. So just mm, keep that in the back of your mind as you head out the door. And if you want to send the kids with an umbrella, not the worst idea, but as I said, it's not going to be terribly rainy this morning. We're just talking about a 20% chance here. Uh, noontime, 80, mostly cloudy. We'll still keep a chance for shower in the forecast, and then by the afternoon, around 86. So a little cooler than yesterday because of the cloud cover. Clouds will be there most of the day. It's humid. It's also breezy. Look at these winds, south southeasterly. 10 to 15, maybe 20 miles per hour, some gusts to 25. And if you've been outside this morning, you know it is definitely breezy. It's that southerly wind that's ushering in more moisture, which could be a good thing for us. It leads to more rain chances. 20% today, 20% tonight, 20% Wednesday, and then we bump it up to 40% Wednesday night, 30% chance on Thursday. Uh, so as we get into Halloween, yes, there are some rain chances. And let me walk you through the future cast here. It does show few showers this morning and as we get into uh, the afternoon uh, generally things will quiet down a little bit and then by tomorrow morning we'll do this all again more of these what we call streamer showers just light showers feeding up through the area then we keep an eye on a cold front this makes its way down into the hill country by Thursday morning so pre-dawn Thursday we've got a thin line of showers and maybe a few storms starting to get closer to San Antonio then the front stalls out for the most part but I think a lot of the shower activity starts to push south by Thursday afternoon, which could work out well for trick-or-treating. We think temperatures will be in the 80s here in San Antonio. It'll still be warm on Halloween, a little cooler in the hill country where you may get some 70s. But very quickly, some of your trick-or-treat need-to-knows, need-to-knows, I think, the, um, I don't know. Uh, sunset, 648 uh, p.m. And uh, your temperatures, as we said, near 80 rain chances there is still a small chance of rain around trick-or-treating but i think the better odds are in the morning uh so to put it all together here 88 wednesday 84 thursday 82 on friday there's your 30 percent chance of rain both of those days but still some small opportunities even going into next week and we'll talk about this next half hour by next week we may actually be talking about a cold front that moves through what? with some cooler what? air. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Hey, bring it on, man. Yes. <laughs> it is 524 right now, 74 degrees outside. All right. It was definitely a rough night for Wemby, Chris Paul, and the San Antonio Spurs. It was taking on, look at that, the Houston Rockets right there. Coming up, we're going to tell you what Jeremy Sohan said following last night's loss against our rivals on I-10.
time to talk some Spurs. Dylan Brooks, you see him right here. The other day he got in a fight with Wemby and Chris Paul on the court while they were back at the Frost Bank <laughs> Center to close out their two-game road trip against our San Antonio Spurs. Mm -hmm. The Rock has led the entire first half and by as many as 17 points early on. Jabari Smith Jr. down low and he gets blocked by Wemby. One of three first half disses for the alien. The Rock has led 62 to 45 at halftime. All right, so they trailed big in the third quarter with the Spurs trying to mount a comeback here in the fourth. Chris Paul hitting a three right here big time, and he gets fouled in the process. So this was called as a flagrant foul one because the defender did not give CP3 room to land. So CP3 makes that free throw, four-point play, and Spurs are only down four. And then look at that right there. Moments later, Victor Wimayama knocks down a fadeaway over Brooks, and the Spurs are down two, 101 to 99 with just 35 seconds left to go. But Fred Van Vliet... <laughs> It's the dagger in the Spurs right there. Hits a three to seal the deal for them. The Houston Rockets, they bounce back. So the two teams end up splitting their series here in San Antonio. Yeah, I mean, we just started too slow. Like, we should have we should have known that um, they're going to come out strong because, you know, the first game was, was what, what, what like it was. And I feel like, you know, we just we started way too slow. Um, they were aggressive. Uh, they had a bunch of second uh, chance points, you know, we had turnovers, um, so we, you know, we have to start better, but, you know, we came back, um, some silly mistakes, you know, it's tough. So the Spurs will next hit the road for back-to-back -back games tomorrow night at the Thunder and then Thursday night at the Jazz. All right, yeah, go Spurs, go. Hopefully they bounce back on the road there. Well, after being benched by ESPN insiders, check this out. A new study shows that the Frost Bank Center isn't as bad as some people might think. Well, sports data company called Fadeaway World analyzed all NBA arenas to determine which venues are the best rated, and the Spurs and the Frost Bank Center came in. A whopping 17th place. Here hey. we go. <laughs> we'll take it. It's better than uh, dead last. Well, the score was a result of high customer ratings and positive keywords like entertaining, hospitable, and incredible on Google, on Google and TripAdvisor. So based on these factors, an overall score was out of 100 was calculated for each arena. And the Frost Bank Center had an overall score of 57.9. Top three arenas were Madison Square Garden, understandably mm -hmm. so, yep. Crypto.com Arena and uh, L.A. and then Kaseya Center mm -hmm. in Miami. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. There you go. Well, the, the, that, that arena in Miami is actually right there on the Miami, what is it, the Bay or whatever? Like the South. So, yeah, that's a great view. So, <laughs> you know what, but this is a lot better than uh, the ESPN Insiders ranking where it was basically second to last, and the arena that was dead last was an arena that hadn't even opened yet. Oh, my God. So, so what yeah. is last place? What number is that? Uh, 30th. There's 30 NBA oh, teams. Oh, wow. So, hey. the, last, that, the Spurs were ranked 29th on that. Other. We're 17th, baby. I was we'll going to say, we're right in, almost in the middle. We're fine. Okay. <laughs> it is 530 right now. Now 74 degrees outside. All right, just ahead, we're going to get a tour of a brand new facility currently under renovation that's housing injured animals in our area. How kids can volunteer to help these animals out. Coming up, a former San Antonio area band director is accused of crimes involving teenage girls. What well, police are saying about those charges against him so far. Plus, a student who caused the death of a Northside teacher isn't facing any charges. How the victim's widow is reacting. All right, and the fall classic underway. The L.A. Dodgers take a 3-0 lead in the World Series. We're going to have an injury update on Dodgers superstar Shohei Otani. Good morning and happy Tuesday, October the... What 29th. 29th. <laughs> I was like, wait, it's not Halloween yet, but we're almost there. We're basically at the date. Yeah, Listen, yeah we're getting there. We're it's getting hard close. to keep up. <laughs> it moves by so fast, it man, but yet we're still warm. There's some dates, uh, days, I don't even know what month it is, but uh, you're right. It doesn't feel a whole lot like October. It's, it's going to stay that way today. E even if you're out and about this morning, look at the temperature, 74. Come on. But at least we are getting some rain. And one of the reasons temperatures are up so much this morning is because we got a ton of humidity coming in, and we've got uh, gusty winds, and that tends to keep temperatures up. Well, let's look at the authority radar here. So if you're going to be uh, heading out right at, uh, right now, know that you may have to dodge a shower or two. What we've noticed with this activity has been very quick moving. doesn't last very long. But if you get underneath one of these little showers like we have here, you actually could get some moderate rain. Uh, for instance, this little one right here, uh, which is just about to cross I-10, and it'll come on the screen here in just a second. That is where you would see some heavy rain, right around Rigsby Avenue. What I can do actually is let's go ahead and pause this. Uh, 
Eh, that's not gonna let me. Uh, but you get the idea. These are all quick moving. Again, not a lot of. Uh, not a lot of rain out of this, but you could see some wet roads, and Alex has reported that this morning. Forecast for today, 20% chance of rain, mainly this morning, and I think into the early afternoon. Rain chances will fall off a little bit late this afternoon and this evening. We make it up to 86, but it will be a mostly cloudy day. And very quickly, your Halloween forecast. Right now, we're calling for some showers, maybe a few storms in the morning, 30% chance, 70s. By the time we get around to trick-or-treating, yeah, there's a chance for a shower, but I think we'll be okay. Temperatures will be in the 80s when it's time to go get some of the candy. All right, uh, we'll talk much more about uh, the extended forecast, which could bring some cooler weather coming up in just a couple of minutes, guys. Ah, uh, yes, uh, that Halloween candy, Justin. Thank you very much. Take a look at your traffic authority, scanning our trans guide traffic cameras. No major incident to let you know about right now. The only thing that TxDOT's reporting going to be out in the far northeast side of town. That's going to be I-35 at FM 3009 Roy Richard Drive. So for all of our folks out there in shirts, Cibolo, keep that in mind. We have the shoulder that is blocked due to a stalled vehicle, but otherwise everything else is looking pretty good, Jeff. Alex Gomez on the roadways with us on this Tuesday morning. And again, he's just driving along, got the <laughs> wheels on the roads. No issues so far, Alex. Jeffney, good morning, and that is correct. No issues as of right now. I'm, I'm barely leaving the east side right here. This is going to be 35 northbound at Ritterman Road, but even with the, some of the damp roads that I've been seeing on the south side, 410 Palo Alto Road, even near 35 near South Cross, luckily still no crashes to report. So I still think we're in pretty good shape, Jeffney. All right, Alex, thanks so much. And if you look above him, you see there are some clouds out there. So if you hit a couple sprinkles on your commute, make sure you turn those wipers on. All right, the latest now, one of our top stories this morning, a former San Antonio area band director, you see him right here, is accused of crimes involving teenage girls. His name is Jesse Orta. He was arrested and charged with invasive visual recording and having an improper relationship with a student in two separate incidents. San Antonio police say that in one case, Orta recorded a teenage girl in the shower. In a separate case, Orta is accused of having an improper relationship with a 17-year-old student at the school that he previously worked at. The arrest paperwork did not specify which school that is. We are working to get more information on this arrest. The Bear County Medical Examiner has identified a man who was shot and killed over the weekend on the northwest side in San Antonio. The Emmy says a 20 year old Isaiah Guevara died of multiple gunshot wounds and his death has been ruled a homicide. SAPD tells us that this happened around four yesterday morning at a complex on Fredericksburg Road near I-10 and Loop 410. There's no word on any suspects at this time. Well, this is scary to think about, but our teachers are sometimes not always safe when it comes to being in the classroom. That's right. Our case head investigates team has been looking into the growing problem for months. The widow of educator Alfred Jimenez tells our Daniela Ibarra that she believes that her husband's life could have been saved. In February, Northside ISD says he was redirecting a student. During that interaction, the district says Mr. Fred fell and hurt his head. Mr. Fred was hospitalized and later died. I was there every day for 10 days and I'd never left his sight. We prayed the rosary every day because he loved the rosary. The medical examiner ruled Jimenez's death as a homicide, but the student who caused Jimenez's death isn't facing any charges. That's something Margot agrees with. This person was my husband's favorite student in his in his room where he took care of him. He loved him to pieces. I would never blame this student, never. She says the blame lies with decision makers. He never should have been murdered like he was at school. He was shoved, pushed, whatever you want to call it. He's dead now because the, the school districts and the state won't do anything. I don't care what it takes. Something has to be done. All right, that is the latest case at Investigate story from Daniela Ibarra. She spent months combing through some of this data there tonight on the Night Beat. She's going to show you what she found. 
In other news this morning, the U.S. Supreme Court is allowing for now an independent authority to continue to enforce anti-doping horse racing rules. Congress passed the Horse Racing Integrity and Safety Act back in 2020 following several highly publicized thoroughbred fatalities and corruption scandals. Earlier this summer, a federal appeals court ruled that key parts of the law is constitutional. The new order this week will leave the enforcement mechanism in place while the justices decide whether to hear the case or not. Baseball news. Freddie Freeman hit a home run for the third straight game and Walker Buehler pitched another World Series gem as the Los Angeles Dodgers beat the New York Yankees 4-2 for a 3-0 lead in the Fall Classic. Now with superstar Shohei Otani playing despite a partially dislocated left shoulder, Los Angeles moved within one victory of a sweep. Buehler and six rel uh, relievers combined on a five hitter for the Dodgers. Yeah, I was really hoping this series would go a little bit longer, but it yeah. looks like the Dodgers in full control. I know Patty Santos in the back. She's excited. She's yeah. a big Dodgers fan. Also, oh, yeah. Adam Barasa, one of our photojournalists. That is true. Yeah, got to hear his trash talk all the time. <laughs> okay, it's 540, 74 degrees outside. <laughs> all right, coming up, a nonprofit dedicated to helping injured wildlife in our city is moving locations. We'll show you their expansion plans and a quick tour of this new facility that is still undergoing renovations. Statue in New Braunfels depicting a World War I veteran was knocked off his pedestal this past weekend. What police are saying about the driving a driver accused of hitting it. And taking a look outside with a live cam across the city of San Antonio. Thank you very much for waking up with us on this Tuesday morning. Hey, y'all, we got a little bit of showers today across the city. We're going to check in with Justin and Alex Gomez in drive cam to give you more information on that. Welcome back. It is 544. A nonprofit dedicated to helping injured wildlife in our city is expanding. Wildlife rescue and rehabilitation just moved to a new location on the north side. Now we'll, we'll plan to do more rehabilitation on site for squirrels and for birds. Um, that was something that we couldn't previously do because we didn't have the space. All right, well, our Patty Santos got a tour of the facility, still currently under renovation, but already operating and housing injured animals. The building is located across the street from Hobby Middle School along Vance Jackson Road near Hebner Road. The nonprofit is grateful for the donations from private donors to buy and renovate their new space. They have a Candelia Center where most of the larger animals are housed. So how would you like to learn how to feed a squirrel or skunk? I definitely would like to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are right now looking for volunteers. We have uh, helping hands which help with things like laundry. You wouldn't think that, uh, that that would be something we need help with, but every single crate that we have has bedding in it that needs to be changed out every single day, uh, and that needs to be laundered and then folded and put away. Kids 12 years and up can volunteer if parents are with them. You can head to ksat.com to find out more about how to sign up. So it's a piece of history and now it needs major repairs thanks to the actions of a driver accused of driving while intoxicated. Yeah, you saw that statue right there in our video. This is in New Braunfels depicting a World War One veteran. Well, it was knocked off its pedestal this past weekend in the city's main plaza. Police say that a driver told him he was swerving to avoid a deer when he lost control of the car and hit it. Although the driver, 32 year old Jesse Cunney, could called it an accident. Officers arrested him on a DWI charge. A city spokesperson was not able to offer a timeline yet for repairs to that statue. I hope they get it done. You know, so all it takes is one mistake, but yeah. fortunately it wasn't a person, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, but again, I hope they make those repairs and I hope he learns a lesson. Uh, there you go. Yeah, definitely two things to uh, take into account there. And uh, yeah, you can check out that full story from Katrina on KSAT.com. 546 right now, 74 degrees outside. Hey, we're taking the outside live cam or drive cam, excuse me, with Alex Gomez. He's got our wheels on the ground scanning the streets of San Antonio had a little bit of raindrops on his windshield earlier we're gonna check in with him and Justin Horn coming up on the other end of this break some people just know they could save hundreds on car insurance by checking all state first like you know to check the weather first before sailing it's gonna get nasty later yep hey perfect day for sailing huh I'll go tell the Coast Guard. Yep. 
Yeah, checking first is smart. So check Allstate first for a quote that could save you hundreds. You're in good hands with Allstate. Bye-bye, cough. Later, chest congestion. Hello, 12 hours of relief. 12 hours? Not coughing? Hashtag still not coughing? Mucin XDM gives you 12 hours of relief from chest congestion in any type of cough, day or night. Mucin XDM. Ah! It's comeback season. Can your pad absorb everything and stay fresh? Always Flex Foam can. It's the only pad made with the flexible foam core that locks in blood and sweat while the top stays dry, keeping you up to 100% leak and odor free. See what foam can do for you. All right, taking a look at your traffic authority right now and things looking pretty good on the roads. Hey, we got some a little bit of sprinkles there on the windshield. So let's go ahead and check in with Alex to see where he's at. Alex, uh, look at that right there. How are things going? Yeah, and it's pretty much like this all hour long. This is going to be on the north side right here, 410 near Broadway. So just a heads up, because any of that moisture is going to mix in with the oils, and it could make things slick. We've been dry for so long, so it could really build up this morning. But luckily, even with all of that damp roads, I haven't heard of any reported crashes. So we're still in the clear, RJ. All right, thank you very much for Al that, Alex. And of course, if we get closer to six o'clock, things are going to get busy. So interesting to see some of these damp roads out there, Jeff. Yeah, no, Justin, you you coming in clutch, man. We've been needing this kind of activity happening. <laughs> oh, it's been so long since we've actually got to use the authority radar, but here we are. And you saw some of the sprinkles on the windshield. Nothing that's going to be very heavy, but it is enough to wet the roads. And uh, as Alex said, those can get slick pretty quickly. Uh, so you see where some of the showers are at this shower. I'll go ahead and put it into motion you'll get an idea of uh, just how quickly these showers are moving everything's moving south to north so you're not going to get much rain out of this and it's not going to last very long uh, but uh, again it could affect your morning commute you may want to grab the umbrella as you're heading out the door this morning uh, just in case and uh, I'll give you a little bigger view here and it's mainly right around San Antonio that we're seeing some of the showers a few more out to the uh, east and I think most of this is going to be along and east of I-35 now the big question will be are we going to get any rain at the airport to end this streak? And I think we will. Uh, it's now been 53 days of uh, days without measurable rainfall. This dry stretch has been pretty incredible. So again, it is so nice to see rain on the radar this morning, and I think we're going to get some more opportunities to get some rain next few days. Outside at the airport, it is 74. Very warm, very humid, very breezy, and uh, temperatures in the 70s in most spots. Uh, today, we'll keep that 20% chance rain going midday even into the afternoon although i think rain chances fall off a little bit later in the day temperatures up around 86. we'll get some better rain chances as we get into wednesday night and again on halloween but i think that uh, a lot of the rain will clear out in time for trick-or-treating so that's the uh, that's the good news and the timing here and let me show you the future cast this is this afternoon doesn't show much but as we get into tomorrow morning kind of a repeat of some of those light showers and then we'll be watching this front as it gets a little bit closer by Thursday morning. It's along that front. We should see a broken line of showers and maybe a couple of storms. The front doesn't move through, but it gets close enough to push some of that rain into San Antonio. Now, some of the models are pushing the showers south by the afternoon, and that's that window I was talking about where it may clear out a little bit as we head into trick or treat time. Very quickly, too, I want to mention next week we're watching for a stronger cold front potentially. This would arrive by Tuesday into Wednesday and it would cool us down. Finally, maybe some 70s, maybe even some 60s. That would be nice. In the meantime, still warm, 88 Wednesday, 84 Thursday. There's that 30% chance of rain. Same on Friday and small chances this weekend and going into next week. All right, Justin, thank you very much for that. 554 right now, 74 degrees outside. Top of your lotto, pick three, four, two, one with a fireball of eight. Daily four, you're looking at six, five, five, zero, fireball of five. That catch five up there, seven, 11, 12, 17, and 31. Now let's get to the Mega Millions. 23, 26, 35, 41, 43 with a Mega Ball of seven. Yes, if you're sleeping, it's time to wake up because I'm screaming with a Mega Player of definitely two Definitely waking times. some people up. <laughs> hey, good luck out there, y'all.
All right, welcome back. We got a quick reminder that if you missed the Dia de los Muertos Festival at Hemisphere Park this past weekend, we will air a two hour Muertos Fest special recapping this weekend's event tomorrow night at seven. Yeah, I know our producer Alyssa Medina working hard on that should be a good one there. Well, soon to come at six o'clock, a message of hope for all women. What, what breast what one breast cancer survivor is saying about her battle this morning and taking a look out at drive cam again. No incidents to report on the roadways but we do got a lot of sprinkles on the windshield. Of course, Alex Gomez got what you need to know for your commute next.